So, without further ado, the 10-year uh, test of time awards plural. Um, you can see we've got two plurals, so we've got two uh, for each of the two categories uh, for this year. So the first of our 10-year um, test of time awards uh, is um, Mawson, uh, Michael Schmidt, uh, Stephen uh, Sutherland, Robert Bart, and Oren Etzioni, uh, Open Language Learning for Information Extraction. Um, uh, I'll read out the, the citations. This paper introduced a new paradigm for information extraction. Rather than finding pre-specified relations in text, it learned general patterns that encoded various ways of expressing relations. As a result, arbitrary relations could be extracted from arbitrary domains at scale. Open IE has become a dominant approach in NLP and a default pre-processing step for many downstream tasks. Um, so if you'll join me in congratulating Mawson. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tim. It's an honor to be receiving this award uh, on behalf of all my co-authors who could not be present today, but I'm representing them. Can I have my slides, please? Um, so this is how we used to look then. Um, <laughs> Uh, this was work that was being done at the University of Washington at the time. I was at the University of Washington as the research faculty, and the work started in the group of Professor Oren um, And I have a couple of minutes, so I'll spend the first minute just giving you a very brief history of the OpenIE project. It started at uh, UW in 2007 with the first system called Textrunner, which in a post factor we call it OpenIE 1. And OLLI, which is the paper that is getting the award, was kind of the third generation OpenAI system. It used dependency pass based extraction. It could uh, extract information from nouns. It could uh, actually additionally uh, extract attribution information. So the main idea there was a bootstrapping approach, which was not novel to Oli, but we were able to show how to use it in the context of open relations. So we could do more verb-based relations, noun-based, other semantic relations, extractions with attributions basically gave us a much better recall. And the general principle was get a rule-based system to tag automatically some data for us and then do bootstrapping to go through language variability and really increase the recall. So this recipe really worked for us and has been used many, many times afterwards. Um, just to complete the uh, history and move to present, uh, OpenAI has been, uh, uh, um, as uh, the citation said, an important uh, paradigm in the field of NLP, although at the time it was very hard for Oren to even get it to, uh, to people and have people accept it. Um, since then, I moved to IIT Delhi, and a lot of the more recent OpenAI systems in this, uh, 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 in this sequence have come from IIT Delhi, so our latest system uh, is OpenAI 6, uh, which has been uh, uh, put together by Keshav Kolluru, my PhD student, and it has already had 2,000 downloads. So that sort of gives us a sense of the impact that OpenAI systems in general have had to the, uh, in the community. Now, I am basically close to finishing my time, so I thought instead of going into the technical details and so on, I will talk about two things that I would like to share with you. One, at the time we wrote the paper, we would never have predicted the impact that it would have, ha it would have in the future. In fact, at the time, it was very hard even to get the paper accepted. Uh, we had our reviewer too, who gave us less than a 2.5 and only later increased it to 2.5. And in fact, what was very nice uh, from, from the reviewer's point of view was to give us this additional comment that I thank the authors for their feedback and I have changed my rating in return. And so as a person who has over time become a little more senior and I'm part of various reviewing processes, I really believe that author reviewer communication is a very, very key aspect of our reviewing process. And the reviewers must look at the rebuttal, but not only that, should give a response back to the authors, whether they agree or not. And I think this communication really encourages uh, the whole, uh, the happiness levels of the community, even if the paper is not accepted. By the way, it was just accepted as a poster. We did not get a talk. So uh, I think, uh, as Oren often says, that writing a paper is the first step of the work, and a lot of impact actually happens after the work, the paper is accepted, how we take it forward, how do we produce resources. So Oli was online. Our later resources have been online, and I think that is one of the reasons why uh, we are getting the award. Uh, the second thing I want to say is a little bit closer to uh, my heart. Um, we have had impact in the sense that we have had about 900 citations, but 
if you see this is Google Scholar and how Google Scholar thinks of this paper, and it thinks that the first author is Michael Schmitz. Now, of course, Michael is a great, great author in this paper. He had a lot of contributions, but the reason is that I have a single name. So Google Scholar completely omits my name, and uh, the first author becomes Schmitz. And a lot of the young uh, uh, students actually use Google Scholar for BibTeX entries, and so they cite our paper as Olli Schmitz et al. And I have sort of come to terms with it, but I think it's not best for the young folks who have the same problem. So may I request all of you to consider using DBLP or Semantic Scholar, which have a lot of much cleaner data than the Google Scholar, whose citations are sometimes really, really messed up. OK. And the last thing I want to say is that one of our co-authors, uh, Stephen Sodeland, unfortunately passed away uh, a few years back through cancer. Uh, he was uh, a very interesting and uh, somewhat of an inspirational figure for us. Um, he uh, entered grad school at the age of 42. Uh, he did his bachelor's in 71, but got a PhD in 97. He, when I met him, he lived a very, very interesting uh, work-life balance. He had goats, he, had, you know, he would chop wood, but he would also do research. A very interesting person who I did not even know that he's living with cancer. He lived with cancer for 15 years, but we could never tell until the very late in his life. Uh, he taught me the importance of looking at data more carefully. It's just not numbers. The data tells the story. The data tells us how to move forward in research. So uh, uh, we all dedicate uh, our award to Dr. Steven Sodelet. Thank you very much.